I'm Liz, the Splitsy DIY, and today I'm going to be doing an overview of a macro keyboard project I built using Arduino, which is an open source microcontroller, or basically a tiny motherboard. And the great thing about open source technologies such as Arduino are the vast resources available that are provided by and for the community. Now, when I started researching for this project, I found an article by Michael on MitchTech.net that I based a lot of my process on for what I did. He also linked to the official Arduino.cc sites page on loading firmware onto an Arduino and USB.org, the official site for all things USB protocol. All of which are linked below, as well as a link to download the Atmel firmware loader and firmware files. And let's talk about why we need all of that. This project has three major steps. The first one is the coding. Code has to be written for the Arduino to communicate to the computer what we want to have happen every time a button is pressed. Number two, the hardware. We have to properly build a circuit for buttons to communicate to the Arduino. And number three, the most important step, is firmware. When an Arduino is connected to a computer, the computer sees it as an Arduino. And as a result, when these buttons are pressed, only the Arduino recognizes the button input. The computer doesn't understand what's being asked to do. We need to trick the computer so that the computer will recognize the button inputs as keyboard keystrokes. And this is done by loading keyboard firmware onto the Arduino itself so that when it's plugged into the computer, the computer sees a keyboard and understands the button inputs accordingly. Okay, so first up is coding, and based on the post on MitchTech.net, linked below, we have the basic shell for creating a fully functional macro keyboard. First, we're going to define some modifier keys, because we're going to be using them throughout the code. So we've got Shift and we've got F10. Now, then we're going to define the pins, which is right here, on the Arduino for the push buttons. You notice we've defined pin 2. These should be digital pins because we're going to be working with data that's sending an on-off message with no other variables, or ones and zeros. And this process tells the Arduino that this is where data is going to be coming in on the board to talk to the computer. Next, we're going to set the serial baud rate right here. And that's a rate that USB HID, or human input devices, communicate with computers. And it tells the Arduino that the defined pins, so pin black right here, that we selected earlier is going to be an input. And that they're going to be receiving serial data or on off inputs. So digital right, serial data, and then the one. And then there's a built in delay right here to prevent any um, code essentially crashing into each other. It's basically telling the Arduino to wait before doing anything with this data, which increases some program stability. So think of this as a dividing line here. This is all the stuff that the code needs to know before it can read this part down here. This is almost like giving it an alphabet. And then when it reads down here, it's going to know what to do. And now the loop, which is right here. And the loop is really where the meat of the code is. You'll notice there's a digital read command, and it's telling the Arduino to inspect an input on the defined input we had back here, and then an if statement. Basically it's saying if this button is pressed, so notice the state equals one, and a one equals on, then it's going to input this keyboard stroke, and notice it does the shift and the F10, which were defined up here. And then you'll notice there's a three-digit number here, and there's a number here, and even lower here where there's another keystroke, there's another number. And what those numbers are is the decimal code for a keystroke on a keyboard. Each key on a keyboard, whether it be a letter, number, or modifier, like these up here, has a digital number assigned to it that the computer reads and knows. And a table for these numbers can be found in a PDF on the USBHID.org website, which I've linked below on page 53. So basically, if we get back to the code here, you'll notice that there are these squiggly lines that are kind of blocking off these three repeating lines of code where the only thing that's changing is the decimal number that's defining the keyboard input. So 
essentially think of each of these little blocks here between the squiggly lines uh, to be one key on a keyboard being pressed once, um, but represented via text in the code. And that about wraps up the basics of the coding that you're going to be doing. It's mostly about knowing what hotkey you're putting in and then getting the correct decimal number in there and also making sure you have the correct sequence and the more technical things like the brackets but the loop is fairly straightforward once you get how it's going to be format it's really this stuff up here all the stuff that defines the pins because if there's any mistakes up here or something's not quite right nothing down here in the loop is going to work Now onto the hardware. This circuit's pretty simple as far as circuits go. We're basically creating an array of push buttons, and the way that push buttons work is there are four pins in two sets of two that are separated from each other. Now when a button is pressed, it connects the two sides to create a contact. Now one side is going to be connected to an assigned digital pin from the code, and the other side is going to be connected to ground for power. On a breadboard, I like to run ground going down one of the parallel rails and then run short jumper wires from each button to that rail to try to keep my wiring tidy. So now the third and final step. I found loading the firmware onto the Arduino to be the most challenging portion of the project because although all of the resources point to using Atmel Flip and installing it is simple enough, I was never able to find a full walkthrough of how it works, so I had to basically find that on my own. It took a bit of time, so hopefully this video will help make that less of a struggle for others. So first we're going to download the hex files linked in the description, and these files contain the firmware drivers. Then after that, we're going to plug in the Arduino via USB. If we look at our devices and printer, there it is, Arduino Uno. Now we're going to short out the reset and ground pins, and on the UNO they're located at the top left of the board behind the USB input right here. And before you do this on your own board, you're going to want to check and make sure the, uh, the pins are the same. Okay, so I'm just using a bit of jumper wire to do that. Um, now you can see Arduino Uno DFU, just load it up. That means that it's seeing the empty chip that basically doesn't have any firmware load on it. So it's kind of just a chip connected via USB that can't actually do anything. So next we're gonna open up Atmel Flip and select a target device with this icon right here that looks like a chip. And so I already have this selected uh, for what chip I need. If you aren't sure, what chip you, your Arduino is running, just go into Devices, right-click, select Properties, and then Hardware, and it will tell you what chip you're running. So we select the chip, then we're going to click on the USB icon here, which is Selecting Communication. We're going to click USB and Open. And you see everything kind of lit up. And next we're going to load the hex file for the keyboard firmware. So it's Arduino keyboard 0-3. Press OK. See it says hex file parsed. And also I want to point out the two lights on the Arduino that are currently lit up. Those are the serial read write lights and that shows that it's both receiving and sending information to Atmel Flip right now. So next we're going to look at operations flow right here. You see it says erase, blank check, program, verify. We're going to run this and this is basically going to do a health check on the board to make sure everything's going to work properly loading the hex file. You see that was very quick. Everything checked out. So we have green lights. And then we're going to click start application and make sure you have reset checked. Uh, so click now you notice this kind of jumped quickly in the window. That means it was ejected out and the firmware has been loaded. So now to get it to load up as a keyboard, we're gonna unplug the Arduino. I like to wait a second and then plug it back in. Now 
And then if we look at our devices, we have a keyboard. We go to properties, hardware. Because this USB composite device is actually my actual keyboard. For some reason, that doesn't show up as a keyboard. So now, if we open up PowerPoint really quick, and I press this to control P and the highlighter, back to the pen, and then one series of code that I wrote in is a little bit more complicated that I kind of want to show off. If you see that, it's going through the menu really quick and what it's doing is, if I go back to the arrow, it's performing the function of right click or F10 and then arrow, 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 all the way down to pointer options, then a right arrow, then down, down, ink color, then across to the color and enter. So that's one macro I programmed and I did that for all of these colors here. So it really shows like, and that's very smooth and fairly instant. You just, you just have to play around with the delay a little bit um, to get the speed correct and the button debouncing correct. But it just shows there's a lot of potential for really complicated macros with this keyboard and with this code. So if you have like editing prompts that you want to have programmed for like Adobe or even Pro Tools, like it's definitely possible. So you'll probably at one point want to use your Arduino again as an Arduino. Don't panic and think that once you load this keyboard firmware, you're never going to be able to use it to program again. All you're gonna do is load the Arduino Uno firmware and you do the same steps. Uh, we're gonna sh short out the pins. And notice the keyboard's gone. And if we go down here, the DFU's back. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna load the UNO hex file, press OK, file is parsed, open up COM, run, and then start application. And same thing. Unplug, plug it back in, and look, Arduino UNO's back. And if I go back into PowerPoint, Go to F5, and if I go to press these buttons, nothing happens. Absolutely nothing. So, we're back to Arduino. So in completing those three steps, you have a fully functional macro keyboard. And there are a lot of different ways you could finish up this project. Either by building a housing for the buttons, using different types of buttons like arcade buttons, or even using an old computer keyboard and splitting out the proper cables to hook into the Arduino. My next steps for this project are to research how I can output Unicode commands using this code structure, so that I can have a macro keyboard that basically emulates the emoji touchscreen keyboard found in Windows 10. And once I get that all sorted out, I will of course make a video sharing how it can be done. But for now, that's all for today's video. I hope you enjoyed it, and if you did, please throw me a thumbs up below or a thumbs down if you feel the opposite. Drop a comment if you have anything to say. Please subscribe to the channel so you never miss a video, and for behind-the-scenes nonsense, follow Blitzy DIY on Facebook, Twitter, Tumblr, and Instagram. Until next time, this has been Blitzy DIY.